everybody, welcome to Tuesday of this 18th week, and today's the Feast of the Transfiguration. This is a feast day, so we have three readings, like on a Sunday, and just like um, Jesus being baptized, the Father speaks to the crowd, the clouds, said, this is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased, the Father, now that was the beginning of Jesus's public ministry. Now the transfiguration is the beginning of the encouragement to take Jesus down the mountain on his way to Jerusalem and his crucifixion. So an important feast day for us today in the life of Jesus. And let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let's ask God for his wonderful mercy. Lord Jesus, you shared with Jesus that he is your beloved son. Lord, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the Father's beloved Son. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you call each of us in baptism to be beloved sons and daughters of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption into sonship. Grant, we pray to your servants that listening to the voice of your beloved son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was bright as snow, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire, with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the books were opened. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord.
Let the earth rejoice, let the many islands be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. Before the Lord of all the earth, the heavens proclaim his justice, and all the people see his glory. Because you, O Lord, are the most high over all the earth, exalted far above all gods. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is really good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He hardly knew what he was saying. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, cast a shadow over them, and from the, vo from the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they, saw, they, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, not very well known these days, B.B. Griffith, is one of the great one of the great spiritual writers of the 20th century and maybe a bleeding a little bit in the 21st century. And at one time he wrote a book called The Golden String, which again, it's a sort of his life. I, I would recommend it to you. I remember reading it a, a while ago. And he tells a story in the book about a day when he was a teen. And he's walking just through the countryside in England. He's from England. And as he's walking along, he hears the birds singing all of a sudden in a remarkable kind of a way. He's wondering, why, why haven't I been so attentive and hear the sweetness of the birds singing like I do right now? Then he comes to a hawthorn tree in bloom. And he said, I, I could smell the, the aroma from the blossoms. And why was it? And I wasn't able to ever do that before. It was such an intense way. Like his senses seemed to be just so very clear to him that he could smell the aroma from these blossoms. He walks along and he goes into a soccer field and he's watching the horizon. The sun sets on the horizon. And he just has this great need to kneel down and pray to God, who he believes to be very tangibly there. 
writing about this experience, he goes on to say, now as I look back on it, it seems to me is one of the decisive events, the most decisive moments of my life. Until this time, B. Griffith was just kind of a normal kid, content with what he saw, with what he found. And now all of a sudden the world was completely changed for him. B. Griffith's experience gives us a glimpse into what Peter, James, and John experienced up on that mountain 2,000 years ago, a decisive moment in their lives. And at one point, Peter actually, later on in 2 Peter in the Bible, he never forgot it. Of course, he wouldn't. He wrote, with my own eyes, I saw his greatness. We were there when he was given honor and glory to God the Father. When the voice came to him from the supreme glory saying, this is my beloved, beloved son with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard the voice coming from heaven when we were up with him on that holy mountain. Spiritual writers, theologians call these events like this, like B. Griffiths had, like the disciples had, they call them moments of grace. These are moments that the border between heaven and earth becomes very, very thin. It's almost like heaven begins to bleed down into earth and God shines on us in an unmistakable way. And we have an experience, a feeling of God, a glimpse of eternity in kind of an unmistakable way. In his book, B. Griffiths writes this. Now that I look back on it, it seems to me that it's one of the most decisive moments of my life, which I just shared with all of you. It was suddenly made aware of another world, I was suddenly made aware of another world of beauty and mystery, such as I have never experienced before. There can be few people in whom such an experience does not come. Can I say that again to you? There can be few people to whom such an experience does not come. These are moments when we really come face to face with reality. And I wonder if many of you may have had these experiences, maybe at an Alpha course or maybe at Crucio. Mine, one of mine, happened at the age of 24, which I've shared with you over and over and over again. And I think that you, many of you, have had similar experiences as B. Griffith, as the Apostles, as many others have had who I know. And I see more and more people having these experiences today. These are mystical experiences, as we talked about on Follow Your Faith. Now, unfortunately, when these things happen to us, we have a way of dismissing them or just letting them go, thinking they're just some kind of a dream or something that happened to all of us. But if we have someone we could talk to about these things, we begin to realize their deep meaning in our lives because probably something like this has happened to you. What happened to B. Griffith, what happened to the disciples, wants to happen to you. These moments of grace are wonderful gifts can't be earned. They're just things that kind of happen to us as we enter the spiritual life and we begin to move forward. And all of a sudden, out of the clear blue, something like that can happen to us and it can touch us, change us, be one of those decisive moments of our lives. It could be a moment when you hear deep inside that you are his beloved. This is my beloved child. You are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased. Wow, to hear that in the very depths of your heart. What a wonderful, wonderful thing I hope has happened to all of you. Which brings me to my question for today. Have you had such a transfiguration experience in your life? Like the apostles, like B. Griffith, and like so many others. If you'd like to share us sometime, let me know. God bless you folks. Thanks for joining me. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Goodbye now.